Uh, what I suggest that we do is that uh, we welcome Prince Constantine uh, to have his speech now, and then afterwards we can show the film again, and uh, followed by fireworks. Prince Constantine, thank you. Sorry about this. In fact, the moment of where we were silently watching the images is, um, was also very captivating. And, um, and this is always the good thing. You can be surprised about things. And I, I'm sure that many of you thought, is this now part of the film? <laughs> or is this, uh, is something going wrong? And uh, till you hear this kind of the, the buzzing sound in the back of people, you know, trying to rush and trying to make things work again. Your Majesties, Your Royal Highnesses, Excellencies, friends. 20 years, many great people have walked on this stage in the great hall of the people. Brave, creative, subtle, combative, exuberant people from all over the world. People and organizations that the Prince Klaus Fund tries to learn from, to work with, to connect to, in order to build more resilient civil societies and to support the freedom of expression and artistic and vocational excellence. 20 years of support for culture in defiance has created an incredible diverse network of artists, writers, activists, curators and architects and scientists with which the Prince Klaus Fund is proudly associated. In 20 years, we've also witnessed the sad passing of friends and family. Torture, abduction, and incarceration of Prince Klaus Fund laureates and partners. Censorship and repression. And also the destruction of irreplaceable cultural heritage. All these events strengthen our resolve and conviction that the fund has an important role to play. We owe it to them and all they stood for to continue celebrating the creativity of people and the power of culture. This doesn't mean that we shouldn't critically assess how the fund works and how effective it is in achieving its mission. Our subsidy has been halved, which forces us to ask what value the fund creates and for whom. We must also acknowledge public doubts about the need of supporting international culture in a context of broader development and foreign policy. And a lot has happened in these 20 years. Human rights have become politicized. Freedom of religion is pitched against the freedom of opinion and media. Globalization as a force of good is not a given anymore. Our experience and senses are increasingly mediated by technology, which may deprive us of surprise, serendipity, and intellectual challenges. Because ever since the age of enlightenment, people have thought education, scientific fact, and pure information would be sufficient to make society enlightened. Now it seems we are entering a post-truth society in which the manipulation of facts and the proliferation of fiction is compounded by social media. 20 years ago, the aftermath of the end of the Cold War. At that time, many would have agreed, at least in this country and many people in the West, that the global North was an exporter of stability, open societies, human rights, and liberal market economies. Then, voices of freedom in the South needed to be amplified and create creativity boosted in what we then dubbed the zones of silence. Now core notions of democracy, like the rule of law and fair representation, are challenged everywhere. When a UK newspaper displays judges that defend the sovereignty of parliament on its cover page as enemy of the people, this is very, very disturbing. Prince Klaus liked to challenge conformism, forcing people to develop their own thoughts, possibly as a reaction 
to having lived under dictatorships in Germany and the Dominican Republic. He would have deplored how, in our increasingly polarized societies, questions, questioning assumptions is becoming dangerous too. For many challenges facing our societies here, there is no north, south, east, west divide anymore. No moral right or wrong. So if you ask why the Prince Klaus Fund is relevant today, I'd say because no one has all the answers. And listening and learning to the fund's network of incredible, creative, engaged people, like many of you in this room today, may open our minds. Because reaching out to opinion makers and cultural activists allows a dialogue to continue between people even when our regimes disagree. Because it is in connecting that we are more resilient in defending our rights and dignity. Because in creating together, we can achieve much greater things. And because the fund resists the trend of dumbing down our societies by giving voice to the exceptional. We need to be challenged, our assumptions questioned, to examine what we think we know. We must train ourselves to look through different eyes, different lenses, to understand what is happening in our world. And as my brother Friso observed, if we apply our understanding of other cultures to better cultural understanding within the Dutch society, we shouldn't pass up on that opportunity. The Fund's international laureates and partners enrich us with their voices. It's important to hear them here. Looking ahead, the Fund will explore ways to strengthen and mobilize the network and to increase its impact, amplifying the voices of reason and the expressions of creativity and human ingenuity is more relevant now than ever before, everywhere. Artists have the possibility of presenting, questioning, reflecting on social issues in subtle and sometimes not so subtle forms. It is essential that we defend the space in which they operate in name of healthy, open, and free societies. And sometimes there are no answers, just questions or mere attempts to slow us down and to allow us time to reflect. And to quote this year's principal laureate, the Thai filmmaker, Apishat Pong, Virasatekun, you need time to make people aware of the beauty of everyday life. I wanted to show that plot is not important, time is. And in the words of his jury, of our jury, the work subtly addresses complex society, social issues through mesmerizing aesthetics and innovative non-linear narratives. His film Fireworks is part of a larger project. It evokes the change or the charged political climate of his home region in northern Thailand. An abstract exploration of a place where political and personal memories merge with the explosive strength of fireworks. In short, and this is my interpretation, you have to be ready to be puzzled. Before we continue the ceremony, may I invite you to watch this short film, Fireworks, of which I hope you have vision and also sound. 